please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Interstellar movie thoughts. Personally, I was fairly relieved to find that at no point in this did, you know, one team of scientists and another, you know, work together without either of them realizing that, you know, one of the two groups was using metric and the other was using imperial. You know, I had to go there. I had to go there. I quite liked the... Where to start? I guess Earth is a, is a good place to start. I the the apocalyptic scenes just early on. It's just this sort of drudgery of well, we have to just hope it gets better and just keep moving. You know, and you see all this dust that they have to get rid of, and you know, and then you see the big dust storm at, that they have to run from at the you know, very 2012, at, at the the baseball game, and yeah, just these, you know, and, and these, you know, interview bits where we see the, the, you know, among others, Murph, as, you know, as a senior, senior freaking citizen, and just talking about how it was, you know, growing up, being, being young at that point and it's yeah just the the use of those clips I, I feel like it was a good you know early on you didn't really know what that was going towards was that going you know where are they kind of you know you get the feeling that there's okay th this has been recorded so they they lived to be old people, but where did they live to be old people, and in what kind of, you know, yeah. And the, yeah, the, 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 it's established that Michael Caine says, your daughter's generation will be the last to survive on Earth. And what do we see? Tom has, excuse me, children, and yeah, they, you know, they have problems with their lungs, and, you know, Tom doesn't, you know, it's, it's when Murph comes by, excuse me, that she sort of knows, you know, I, I can, I can get you, uh, you know, come, you know, I, I know a guy who can, who can look at the, you know, Tom hasn't really, you know, it, it's the kind of thing where you think, shouldn't Tom have just moved them away, but the thing is, at that point, he's kind of resigned himself to, we're going to just try to make the best of it here on Earth as farmers. So to him, you know, it it's almost like giving up to go somewhere else. You know, he straight up punches the, the doctor. I love the, you know, then when Tom drives back in the car, you know, the, the doctor gets out with... Yeah, I don't know what it's called, but yeah, it'll, it'll hit him pretty hard if if necessary. You know, it's it it very much it brings up how the what are the different thoughts on how what do we do to survive and what is the right way to spend our hours our of the hours that our lives are made up of, you know. Rom points out, you know, I, I kept going, going back to sleep, but then, you know, I, I kept waiting for you. I felt like I didn't want to waste all the hours of my life dreaming, you know. And we have Matt Damon's character, who is basically like obsessed with his own survival, and you know the. 
you know, Michael Caine's character on, you know, he, he feels, he makes himself believe that it's right to, sin, which, you know, that's an argument to be had. If it's right to lie in order to, you know, get people sent into space, which can keep, you know, and, and they could keep the, you know, the human species going, even if Earth does not, you know, if it just does not work out. And there, it is not possible to get the, you know, get people off Earth en masse. Now, the, I suppose that, I quite liked the way it went back and forth between Earth and space. For a while, I was wondering if it was going to, because it, the whole nonlinear thing is very Nolan. And would he really give us a whole movie, which, you know, is just, you know, a handful of people up in space? And, you know, I kind of figured that some way that, you know, there'd be some way that the ship could contact Earth or something. But I did not foresee it being this, you know, that they land on the, the one planet, which turns out to just be water, and then they lose some hours there, and then when they come back, years have passed because of, you know, yeah, as it's explained in the movie, and thus when they, you know, when they come back, they get these messages that are, you know, that build up to being, you know, 23 years and yeah the the way you know first we get all this stuff from Tom and just and it's so gripping just this you know I mean just the moment you find out that you know they were gone for that long and even Rom aged much of that time but then you know there are messages from home and then they you know go in and he gets all these messages from Tom and yeah, it's it's really very well done. And then, you know, it's the grandfather, I'm I'm sorry, Murph refused to I I'll I'll try to get her next time. And you know, just one after the other and eventually Tom's end and then he reaches out to the screen and then Murph's first one comes on and it's like it's my birthday. You said you'd be here. And it's, yeah, that was, that was very well done. And then, you know, the thing of, it goes from him seeing the, the footage to her shooting the footage. And thus, you know, from there on out, the movie cuts back and forth between Earth and space. Very nicely done. I, yeah. And it's a... Also, because there is kind of, both are important, like, I mean, ultimately what it comes down to is that Matt has information that, Coop has information that Murph can use, and Murph is the one who has, you know, the resources who can use it. So, it is a matter of him somehow getting the information to her, and that, you know, brings, you know, bookshelf and so on and so forth. But even before that, it is this thing of, it's important that he's out there looking for new planets, but it's also important what's happening on Earth. You know, even if, you know, ultimately part of what happens is that Amelia uses the you know, forms a small colony on the the planet, I don't remember, wolf something, the, you know, yeah, the, the, the guy who landed there, she, you know, felt a connection to, and that she wanted to land there, and it turns out that was, you know, from the ending, apparently a good planet to live on, and, you know, she started using the plan B thing, yeah, which is kind
kind of ironic because isn't plan B usually to stop pregnancy or and stuff? But anyway, yeah, it's it's a great you know it yeah both 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 settings are crucial. Now the I thought that the you know the yeah the relationship between Coop and Murph. I mean I remember it's in the review that it, it's you know it's the heart of the movie. I like how I don't love once it gets into kind of sappy territory, but this thing of you know they're both as stubborn as the other one and there is this thing of you know at first she refuses to say goodbye to him until you know yeah at, at first she just refuses to say goodbye to him and then she suddenly realizes he's really going and she runs out and it's too late for her to get to the car and then she comes out when the car comes back and it's like is that no that's not dad and you know she's like what are you doing here is <laughs> you know and yeah and then you know for all those years she doesn't send any messages and then right there at the end you know after 23 years she does you know it and and yeah she says you know at first i i didn't want to send you you know i was still mad at you then you stopped sending any back, and it was like, okay, fine, whatever. And then I turned 35, just like you were when you left. And, you know, it's, yeah, there's there's that kind of stubborn stubbornness to both of them that makes it work. And, again, keeping it, before we get to the the sappy stuff that's also how she keeps working on you know she realizes that Kane's you know calculations that they don't you know they don't really lead anywhere and you know she she brings it up with him and and he is like oh are you calling my work nonsense and you know but she realized it and then afterwards she does continue to work on it you know and that and that you know, going from this shot where she points to the, the blackboard and says, you know, this doesn't really make sense, and it's just, you know, and then later, and she goes up and she erases the blackboard and starts putting in new stuff, you know, that was a great little thing there with the, you know, it's very, sort of, you, you have the, the settled and the, the ideas that we feel like, well, that's, you know, we've done what we could there, and then, you know, you have bringing in something new and find, you know, it's, it really captures the excitement of the new discovery. Now, the, also the, the sort of curiosity and scientific, you know, they're, they're both scientifically minded and that is also that's how they find NASA in the first place. And the I suppose that's as far as I can go in that direction before I get to the sappy. So so yes, the the sap. It got pretty I feel like each time a, a character did a, a speech, a monologue, that really focused on the word love, that was where it, it you know, that's, that's where we reach Hallmark territory. And, yeah, the, the thing of him, you know, yelling through the, the bookshelf, you know, oh, can I reach her in this... Yeah, but, uh, you know, yeah, I, I can't really, I, I, I can't make any excuses for it, and I won't make any excuses for it. It's, it's hokey. But afterwards, I do quite like this, you know, the, the idea that the, you know, early 
in the film, they bring up the they that, you know, opened the, the hole and, you know, sent the signals and such. And it turns out that the, you know, the, the signal stuff was, a lot of that was him after he reached, you know, the, the fifth dimension Tesseract thing. And, excuse me, and the, you know, and, yeah, and, and the, the rest of the they stuff was, appear at least to have been, like, human beings from so far into the future that they found a way to make it, you know, yeah, to, to bend those and, yeah, that was that was quite compelling. I I did not expect this movie to go. You can't really say time travel, but time bending, kind of. Did not expect it at all, and yeah, it was very compelling that it that it did. I thought that the various fates surrounding the astronauts were very nicely done. You know, you have the, the water planet where it turns out that the, you know, it, it went wrong almost immediately. Basically, you know, the, yeah, they, they landed and got crushed by, you know, the waves. And then our guys show up and find, you know, well, how, how you know, that they, they find out that that's what happened. And they're like, how did, you know... How is it that it's still so fresh that it's not, well, you know, in in this time, it was only a few hours. You know, the fact that to us, it's years, yeah, very cleverly done. And then you have, I already mentioned, you know, the, the thing, I don't want to spend too many of my hours sleeping. And Matt Damon's character, who, you know... You can understand how he could get so freaked out, and that, that's I think I think they mentioned that scenario. You know, you you hope you don't land on a planet which is hopeless because then yeah, and yeah, I mean what he does is obviously wrong, but you can still understand it. It doesn't feel like a you know complete yeah, and and yeah, it's again this thing of. What do you do when you, you know, do you just resign yourself and, yeah, very, very compelling and, and, and Coop sacrifices himself to get Amelia the last little bit, you know, he, you, you said there was enough fuel, what is this, 90% honesty, so, yeah, very, very nicely done. And the, I also want to, the, the, the thing with Matt Damon, you know, attacking, I thought it was very nicely built up. You gradually get the sense there's something wrong here. But it's only just about when it's happening that you realize there's, yeah, there's literally something, so he's going to attack him. And then, yeah, that was very tense throughout the whole you know right from when he first attacks Coop to I guess when the you know when they're eventually back on the you know connected to the the overall thing once you know yeah the, the whole spinning yeah that very very tense and yeah and and the fight, you know, it it's exciting and has these little humorous moments, you know, where he he's like, okay, you you can't possibly attack now, and then he starts headbutting him, and it, you have there's fifty percent chance that you're gonna kill yourself like this, better odds than I've had in years, and he keeps doing it, and yeah, and when they, you know, the, the thing about you know, oh, well he he can't use the the docking procedure. Well, it's on autopilot. Nope, Tars, you know, removed it. Excellent, you know, and and then he just keeps going forward, and you know, he's using the joystick to just get it 
perfectly aligned there and just keep saying, you know, and they keep calling her up and saying, no, you, you, please, you can't do that. And it explodes and starts spinning. And it's like, okay, what are they going to do now? And Coop manages to, you know, get theirs spinning along with, and yeah, just, <laughs> Nolan has this way of building these, events where you're like, well, they're not going to get out of this, okay, they got out of that, but how are they going to, oh, and that went there, you know, just twist upon twist, yeah, now, I already mentioned in the review that, you know, there's setup and payoff to just about everything here, I did not expect the thing with, you know, the ghost to be this, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I didn't, you know, when it's first mentioned, you don't necessarily really think too much of it, but then, you know, oh, no, wait, there's there's really something here, and then, you know, they, they find the, the dust having settled, and, okay, maybe there really is something here. I had not at all expected it to be him in, you know, a dimension beyond yeah that and yeah the the little watch comes back into play you know again when she throws it away I'm like okay well you know I, mentally without without literally thinking it something in my head is saying okay well obviously not we're not going to see the watch again but then it's still there and it was still set so it can now be used to communicate just yeah, amazing. Yeah. Now, they're near the end where, you know, Ellen Burstyn is lying there in, in bed and she's like, I, I don't want you to see me die. It's just, you know, <laughs> Ellen Burstyn and, and hospital beds and impending death. Yeah, I, I just, you know, maybe maybe want to spare a coop from, from that one. And I did think that it was interesting. I don't know too much about Nolan's political leanings, and certainly some of what he's put on screen in The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises have, you know, make him seem as though he might be on the conservative leaning side of things, but I swear, that bit in the opening with the school, that was, a, you know, I mean, we've straight up got Texas school board books going into, I mean, I, I can sort of see how, you know, okay, we, we want to be, you know, if, if we keep encouraging space travel, then maybe we'll waste money on that instead of food, but that was an interesting one that and and Coop's reaction was absolutely perfect with you know I think I'm gonna take her to a baseball game and then got you expelled and that's what we're closing on psych actually I just realized there was at least one more thing I want to note I quite like them having to carefully choose what planet to go to at first it's like okay we have this this and this and this okay let's go to this one this looks good and then they lose you know, so much fuel and time on that one. Okay, we only, we have to really very carefully choose now and just, yeah, you know, in, in something like this, in real life, you hope that nothing goes wrong on these sorts of missions. So whenever a science fiction movie has something like this, you always want to be careful that whatever goes wrong, whatever conflict there is, isn't frustrating to the audience, that it isn't something where we're just like shouting at these, you know, professional astronauts, would you please put your differences aside? This is, you know, this is pretty important. This is more important than your egos. And here it actually is. I mean, again, you know, yeah, when, when the love thing is brought up, but they do actually, you know, they do make the decision. They they don't just go, okay, well, we're going with love. So, yeah. 
And I think that covers everything. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.